Hello everyone, it's me, the Rule Local Maniac. I'm back again with another 8-Bit Wars. Now, as you can see, today I'll be playing a Vigilante. Now, normally I do say, you know, classic arcade game, but Vigilante isn't really a classic arcade game. It basically was an average arcade game that I used to play in the arcades, which I also used to get, um, you know, the arcade conversions on my 8-Bit um, computers. So there's the story, the Skinners have taken Madonna hostage, and you've got to take the law into your own hands to rescue her. So here we go. Now as you can see, the game is a uh, scrolling beat em up. Basically you just walk from left to right and you just have to beat the crap out of all the endless uh, baddies that sort of like run towards you basically. Now this game to me always felt like um, a clone of uh, Kung Fu Master. And it feels pretty much exactly the same thing where the guys try and grab you and you've got to shake them off. And then basically, yeah, you face, you know, it's not the greatest game to be honest with you. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I, I used to play any arcade game that used to come out in my local arcade games. You know, I was just fascinated by arcade machines generally. And um, despite whether it was a great arcade game, I still used to get it for my, first of all, for my Spectrum, Amstrad, and then the Commodore 64. Now up there you'll see the word, uh, the name Maria. Now I don't know if I'm correct in this, maybe one of you guys can point this out for me, but um, I'm sure in one of the versions, the woman you've got to save is actually called Maria. I don't know whether it's the 8-bit computer versions or the Sega Master System. Which brings me to my next point actually guys, the uh, Sega Master System version is probably slightly better than the arcade um, machine. And this game is very, very limited in what you can do. You just walk left, right, you can jump up and down. Um, by jumping, you've got to push up on the joystick. You've got a punch button and a kick button. And there's not much more to it, really. It's pretty basic, actually, when you think about it. You can understand, like, Kung Fu Master, when that first came out in the arcade, uh, due to when it came out. But games had moved on since then, and I don't think this game did much. Yeah, fair enough, the graphics are semi-decent. You know, they're not overly fantastic. Now, as always with the 8-Bit Wars, guys, I'll be comparing the way the game sounds like, the way it looks, the way it plays, and just the overall feel of the game. Actually, I do find this uh, boss kind of memorable, actually, you know, with his red jacket and his uh, blue jeans and his big black boots. It's a pretty tough boss, actually, considering the fact that you've got to hit him God knows how many times with some nunchucks to the face. And he just stands there and takes it, basically. So again, yeah, if once he grabs you, you've got to shake left and right to escape. Now, honestly, I, like I said, I used to play loads of uh, arcade games, and I always used to sort of get the arcade ports, because I was just a gaming fan, basically. And guys, I've got loads more 8-Bit Wars plans. Absolutely loads. I've got Yogi Bear, Eswat, and others that I just can't remember that can spring to mind, basically. But hopefully, I should be uploading quite a few. I've had a little bit of a break because you know, I've been spending some time with family. I've been sort of going out, enjoying the sunny weather, hanging out with my friends and socializing and stuff like that. So, yeah. Alright, so that's the end of the arcade game there. So the van is carrying Madonna away somewhere. If I remember rightly, the second level was like a scrapyard. Yeah, the junkyard. Right, so this is the ZX Spectrum version. Now, this was the first version of the 8-bit computer versions that I actually got. It's not a very impressive title screen there. Now, you've got a choice at the bottom of the controls and also color and mono. Mono basically just makes it two different colors and color basically uh, just gives it lots of color clash. Now the skinheads have taken Madonna, so it's the same storyline there, but the graphics there aren't fantastically done. You really can't tell that is Madonna lying there inside a van, and that's just the light escaping from it. If you hadn't played the arcade game, you wouldn't know what the hell's going on there. Alright, so there we go. It's a bit of a coloured mess. The sprites aren't horrible, but to be honest with you, they don't look very similar to the actual arcade game. The main sprite doesn't. The main sprite looks somewhat cartoony in the arcade game with his uh, blue dungarees. Now, I find this game frustrating, actually. Just, you can't walk too far with actually having a baddie sort of, like, try and grab you there. Now, some of the baddies, they'll, they'll sort of go down with one kick. 
other baddies, you've got to kick them a number of times. I actually find an uh, inspection version that probably one of the best ways to get rid of them all is with the nunchucks. Whereas in the arcade, you can actually pretty much breeze through a few levels without actually using the uh, nunchucks. Now again, um, like I said, it ha did have two color modes. It had the monochrome color mode, and it also had, you know, this mode. Um, the monochrome wasn't that great, to be honest with you. It didn't look fantastic. I always preferred the color mode. Um, just added a little bit of sort of, I don't know, character to the game, I suppose. So as arcade conversions go, um, this isn't a great conversion of a decent, well, a an average arcade game, basically. Can't, you know, I was really uh, upset when I bought this game because I paid what nine ninety nine for it, I believe. I used to get some of my games from New Covent Garden Market, uh, which is near Vauxhall. I used to go there every Sunday with my dad, and um, every sort of like week on a Sunday, I'd go down and he'd buy me a game or two. So I, I was one of the kids that was lucky enough, basically, to actually own the uh, three computers, the Spectrum, the Amstrad, and the Commodore 64. And um, yeah, I, I was kind of glad that I actually did own three of them. I, gu I guess I was kind of lucky now thinking about it. I was a bit spoiled. And it was just nice sometimes having the same game but on a different uh, computer because they played and looked very different. So that's why I guess uh, I didn't mind sort of uh, actually spending my dad's money on the, on the games. Alright, so we're coming up to the first boss now, guys. Now the first boss does look very similar to the way he does in the arcade, minus the colour. There he is. Actually, he looks like he's uh, got little roll-ups on his uh, jeans and he's not got his big black, you know, black boots, basically. But I'm sure that's what they're meant to be. And he's easier to defeat in this as well. Like I said, if you've got the nunchucks, you basically just crouch hit the punch button and just beat the crap out of him. Believe it or not, I did actually finish this game on a ZX Spectrum. I, I was really good at one point. So yeah, look, that's the end of the first level. Stage 1 cleared. Right, so this is the Amstrad version of Vigilante. Now, I actually got this a few months, I believe, after I got the, um, the Spectrum version. So, yep, here we go. This has got some nice music there at the beginning. As you can see, this was probably by US Gold. Slightly better title screen than the one on the Spectrum, so I think it adds a little bit more character to it already. And then, you know, it's got music, so hey, you can't go wrong with that. So there we go, the skinheads have taken Madonna hostage. The graphics are a little bit better due to the colour. Right, so the first thing you'll notice, the game is in full colour. It, the scrolling's not overly fantastic, but I like the way the sprites look. Even though they do look like Lego characters, they look a lot more solid than they do in the ZX Spectrum version. But overall, to be honest with you, it controls pretty much exactly the same thing. I don't think it controls too differently than the ZX Spectrum version. So there's no in-game music, unfortunately, but hey, you know, no big deal. And once again, the main hero there, your vigilante, is not wearing his blue dungarees. He's wearing, like, uh, black dungarees this time. Now, sound effects sound very similar to the ZX Spectrum. Again, playability, this plays pretty much like the same as the ZX Spectrum. So, at the moment, you know, the Amstrad is winning this 8-bit wars because it, the characters look a little bit more solid. The backgrounds look a little bit better, despite the you know the graphics looking like Lego people. Oh, I'm trapped in the middle. That's one thing you've got to try and avoid doing there, guys. Now, again, guys, don't expect a superb arcade conversion on uh, either, you know, like Spectrum, Amstrad, and Commodore 64, because the arcade game itself wasn't overly fantastic. You know, it was just like an average game. I, I'm not really a big fan of it now, but back then, you know, I, I used to enjoy it. And like, uh, I don't know if I mentioned before, if you are interested in playing a semi-decent version of uh, Vigilante, uh, you should try out the uh, Sega Master System version, which is like a version, again, I, I, I've played to death and I, I finished it a number of times. 
I might have to do a video on that actually, just to sort of like see if it plays as good as I remember it. I think there was also a PC Engine version, if I'm right, which I, I might have remember seeing on the um, CVG magazine, and the you know, the graphics look pretty decent on that. Yeah, guys, I just want to remind everyone that on the 18th of June, uh, we're doing a 1HMPS retro meetup. So it would be absolutely fantastic if you could all make it. Basically, we're going to Funland, which is in the Trocadero in Piccadilly Circus. And the plan is basically we're going to play loads of arcade games, play some Daytona, play some Super Mario Kart, play some Street Fighter, maybe do a bit of bowling. And then afterwards, go down to the pub and just have a little chit chat about some retro gaming. And hopefully I'll get to sort of meet some of you in person, which I'm looking forward to. So yeah, now, now I've plugged that event, go back to the game. Again guys, uh, you know, I'm not saying this is a bad conversion of uh, the arcade game. I just don't actually think the arcade game was that fantastic to begin off with. I mean, it's very, very, you know, similar to um, Kung Fu Master. Very similar. But I just don't think uh, by the time the arcade game came out, you know, that graphically or playability wise, it was good enough, you know. There were other games that came out when Vigilante came out that sort of played along the similar lines, but just took things, did something different. And this doesn't, basically. This just looks pretty average. Now, as you can see, the guy with the beard here with a red coat has got a red coat. And um, it looks like he's wearing sort of like goth platform type shoes because he's pretty tall there. He's lost a little bit of weight. He's not as fat as he is in the other versions. And in this version, one of the best ways to beat him is just fly and kick him to the face. You know, kick him in the beard. That always helps. Can you imagine actually being able to beat someone up like this in real life? They walk towards you, you just fly and kick them. Just like that. Right, so we're coming up to the end of the Amstrad version. Again, you know, so far I think it's beaten the Spectrum version due to the fact that it's got music in the title screen, the title screen presentation is a lot better. And it just looks a little bit more solid. So let's see how the Commodore 64 version uh, compares to them. Alright, this is the Vigilante Hall of Fame. So again, the same storyline, the skinheads have taken Madonna hostage. Take the power into your own hands. I, d don't, I just don't know why he didn't call the police. Would have been slightly easier. Now here's our hero there, completely in blue, wearing a complete blue outfit. He's not wearing dungarees, he's wearing like a boiler suit. You know, something like Jason Voorhees would wear, or what's the name? Um, 